Hello, everyone. <coughs> Hello, everyone. This is SJW Africa, a Wesley Osas. If you are a Jehovah's Witness from Africa, this channel is for you. If you are watching this video from Nigeria, from Ghana, from South Africa, from Liberia, from Sierra Leone, Zimbabwe, this channel is for you. Well, I'm a um, SJW now, but I want to say to you that I was just like you. Now, if you have been following my video, I, my last video, I said I was going to continue uh, my story on how I got to this point, how I woke up from this, this religion that you are right now, if you are one of Jehovah's Witnesses. All right, um, I think uh, this might be the first time you've uh, run into a video on YouTube from Nigeria and of an XD, XD dub. I don't know if you've seen anyone, but I, I, I discovered that there's not so many SJ dub YouTubers from Africa. So I thought I uh, I throw my leg in and see uh, how I um, give my voice, you know, add my voice to the many voices already out there, you know, in the Western world. Uh, so I wanted to talk about or continue my story about uh, how I got here. Now uh, I said uh, my father was uh, that I was born in to the religion my father uh, was uh, born into a traditional setting so he didn't grow up by Jehovah's Witnesses I already to, uh, uh, let you know the uh, introduction of how um, uh, he got involved with the religion so right now we are we're uh, my father took a decision that would affect his life for worse after he got involved with the religion uh, he won a scholarship because my father was a very brilliant, very intelligent man, you know, he was one in the district that won a scholarship. He was to continue uh, his, his studies, but when the Jehovah's Witnesses came along and the government at the time had asked that they salute the flag before he would... Uh, be admitted into college he declined at that time he was he had already taken religion very seriously you know what i mean back in the in the in the 70s back in the 70s you know the whole 1975 thing i think was going on then and the expectation was high so now that he found the truth he wouldn't let anything come his way so he forsook the opportunity to go uh, to get into college for his education his family uh, tried all they could to make sure that he 
uh, didn't miss the opportunity. And even more so that uh, the uncle who he, he who he is dropped in his conversation that made uh, uh, from which he became a, a Jehovah's Witness now had died some years uh, earlier. So he was now the eye of the family. The family needed him to be there. The family needed him to get a good education so he can fly the flag of the family. But now he is saying to everybody that he is not going. He would not salute the flag. That he will want to go the uh, the way of what the Bible demands that he does. So it became war in the family. His father was a chief. And to make matters worse, he told his father that if he died, he was not going to succeed him. Because um, as a successor, he would be asked to perform certain rituals. And that got his, <laughs> my grandfather, that got him so mad that, what? You are not going to succeed me? You know, it's a big deal in Africa. If you're a king, you want a successor. You want a male successor. You want somebody that will carry the legacy. So my father was was going to ditch all of that. He was going to bury all of that. So that was the fallout my grandfather. He continued on. Um, after he had... Uh, uh, Miss the opportunity to uh, of that scholarship. He at this time uh, couldn't go any further because his father would not support him anymore in any of his adventure. He wasn't against higher education. Uh, he believed that he needed to get a, an education, but he wouldn't salute the flag but if another opportunity came or if he needed to pay his way through college uh he his his game but his father would need to support him of course the father had the money and everything but now he's falling out with his father told the father that he was not going to succeed him and that was it so he left home and started struggling you know, in the years to come, he got married to my mother. Things got from bad to worse. He couldn't fend for the family. My mom took up the responsibility. The poor woman would hawk uh, cooked foods, you know, you know, and trek several kilometers to uh, uh, sell to road road construction workers and did all sort of menial jobs to uh, get a family by. My dad was just sitting at home doing nothing without education in a country like Nigeria you are toast even with a good education you don't get no job much less if you don't have an education at all So it continued on like that. Uh, my father, I would say, was a sincere man, was very, very sincere about the religion. He thought he, uh, it was the truth. And at the time we came along, we all thought this religion was the truth. You know, he, the persecution from the family now, you know, reinforced that I believe that this has to be truth. Uh, if your family forsake you, Jehovah would not forsake you, and all of that. Well, um, we had that narrative going on, but poverty was the plague we had to deal with. To make matter, uh, matter, matters worse, my father contracted tuberculosis. Um, uh, a disease that wore him down. Uh, this disease need, need uh, high care. 
medication and uh, proper nutrition and he didn't have that so things really got bad uh, I can't describe the poverty uh, <laughs> we lived in at the time is uh, I'll make a video to describe what it really takes to be um, a poor Jehovah's Witness in a third world country uh, that would that'll be another video now the organization that he fought for that was supposed to uh, assist him now that he has a problem turn his back on this man my dad was seen as uh, uh, a man who knows it all a man who uh, always sh uh, try to be the one at the center of uh, attention because he will always speak the truth uh, the congregation elders uh, would uh, try to spin things around but well, my dad he wasn't even an elder he couldn't um, he the congregation uh, elders wouldn't uh, wouldn't recommend him for any privileges because they thought that he if he came on board he was going to burst their bubbles so for that reason, he, he was just uh, an ordinary publisher, uh, an ordinary publisher as they would, uh, as they would refer to those who are uh, neither ministerial servants or elders in the congregation. So they turned uh, their back on my father. My father was just struggling alone. Or well, he believed that he still believed in the religion. Uh, sometimes he will say to himself that uh, the Bible says that judgment will start in 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 Jehovah's house and all of that. So uh, he went on like that until uh, he got admitted for a week or so at the hospital. Um, the brothers had come along to when there was now public outcry that hey this man you need to get him to the hospital no you guys say that you love yourself and what is going on so my they managed to pull my father in the hospital and when he was due to pay his bills they never showed up uh, I can't really recall how he goes discharge. He he didn't uh, complete his treatment. He didn't complete his treatment. He he got discharged and uh, brought back home. And um, sadly, my dad did not make it uh, in the years to come as he struggled with the disease. So um, let's just call the show there. He 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 died of the disease, and um, uh, we basically forfeited every of our grandfather's inheritance because my dad would not perform certain rites. So we became homeless. Uh, my mom took us from one residence to the other. You know, it continued on like that. But during this time, we were. Uh, uh, superstars in the congregation we were uh, very brilliant <laughs> like uh, intelligent like our father you know we caught the eye of the congregation uh, we would make nice comments and uh, you know the we were living the life but we were still swimming in the pool of uh, abject poverty what would happen in the years to come will shed light on how I woke up from this religion. This is SJW Africa, Wesley of Sass. I'm trying to reach out to Africa.
please subscribe to my channel i would uh, love for you to stick to this channel for more videos as i'm really very passionate in passionate in reaching out to um vulnerable africans whose lives have been destroyed by this religion so thank you again and um thank you for for always being there for me see you in my next video